Griffin Art coming to you from deep in the heart of West Texas where I have a process video for you today instead of my regular art chew. I'm working on uploading more original content to my YouTube channel rather than um, art vlogs all the time. So I decided to record for you today. Here are my supplies that I have gathered. Uh, this is going to be an art journal page and I'm working through some prompts from yellowartdaisy.com yellow art daisy or yellow daisy art excuse me yellow daisy art.com there are lots and lots of art journal prompts on there and instead of trying to copy someone else's style or someone else's thing which I talked about in art chew last week I think what I'd rather do is take some prompts and go wherever they lead me and see what I can come up with so Today, I am working in a Canson Mixed Media Art Journal, Spiral Bound. Um, it's a little bit smaller than 8.5 by 11. I have covered the front, so I can't tell you precisely. See, it's all covered up. So, there. We're working in a Spiral Bound Mixed Media Journal from Canson. Um, and the prompt for today was mint. It just said mint. Uh, to me that says color and also it can go mint to me can go green or it can go blue I'm kind of in the middle the primary color that I'm going to use today not primary color see I caught what I did there the main color that I'm going to use today is from Americana uh, from their um, deco art line this is sea glass remember if it's from Americana it has a gold cap you can use it for fine art so that's going to be the main color. I do have a couple of accent colors. I've got Tickled Pink from Folk Art. I've got Payne's Gray from PBO. This is not a Dyna, so this is not shimmery. This is a, a flat Payne's Gray, and then a regular sort of steel gray from Plaid. Also, I'm going to be using some Daler and Rowney matte medium. This is an inexpensive matte that I really like. And uh, I'm using some paper also. Um, I used to be a scrapbooker back in the day. I'm sure a lot of people in mixed media did. This is a 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbook paper. It has typewriters all over it. That background is kind of the same mint color. And hold on, I'll tell you who makes this paper. This paper is made by Chamel, it looks like. I have a whole pad. See? Chamel. I don't know her, <laughs> but anyway, I have a pretty good amount of this pad left, and I don't scrapbook so anymore. I don't even make cards anymore. I used to do that as well, so I'm going to use up some of this paper for my mint green color, um, and I've got some stencils kind of back over here to the side. Uh, also, probably will use some Liquitex um, white gesso at some point. I am a big fan of the West Wing. Anybody out there also a fan of the West Wing? I never watched it when it was on, but recently I watched all seven seasons on Netflix. Thanks Netflix for enabling me, love ya. I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna get out some of this matte medium and lay it down on the paper. And I'm using palette paper over here to the side. So my quote today, once we get to that point, is from the West Wing. Um, which I don't know how I lived so long without it in my life. I'm loading up my brush pretty full because I'm not going to try to be that nice and neat. I never really try to be that nice and neat with my art journal. Uh, it's for testing. It's for trying out new ideas. If you're that person that doesn't like stuff getting on your other pages um, next to the page you're working on, I would put a piece of wax paper underneath there um, or scrap or something in between the pages. I don't really care. Sometimes you can come up with things that are pretty amazing um, by accident. So I leave things open to that when I'm working. And I have my brush tank over here. You can kind of see it. There it is. Oh, that water's nasty. Keep clean water, folks. Okay, so I'm just going to slap this paper on the matte medium. Matte medium is a really good adhesive and I'm gonna line it up where I can 
use that bottom edge because it's already straight like that and I'm going to give it a nice fairly firm press just to make sure I get it all laid down and you may have to go back in once we tear the paper off and catch some edges and things that's okay with me too and I'm going to reach here and just fold across right there because that's where I'm going to tear and I'm going to fold here also where I'm going to tear Turn it and let's tear a little bit. If you can tear downward, that works best. This is a little bit thicker paper, so it's not going to tear seamlessly. That's okay with me too. I don't mind if um, if it looks a little a little messy. Um, most of the stuff that I do, I add intentional wear to stuff so to projects so that they will look a little more worn. And so I don't mind. If you mind that, use scissors. If you don't mind it, then you don't mind it, and it's not a thing. Is it going to tear evenly? That's pretty good. Now, this goes to the scrap pile for use somewhere else. I've got a little bit much hanging on up here. I'm going to tear it down a little more. Just so I don't have too many pokies. There, that's fine with me. And if I if they start to bug me later, I'll trim them again. I believe that's called a deckled edge for those of you who are for looking for professional terminology when you tear paper like that. Um, and I'm gonna check the corners, make sure I got everybody down. That's good. That's pretty good. Is this one peeking up a little bit? See, that one's peeking up a little bit. I use. Um, a, an old cloth diaper for my paint rag. So there's that. They're clean. I cleaned them before I use them. Good grief. So I'm going to dab a little bit more in that matte medium. Can you see it? Did I pull it down too far? I got it down a little bit far. There we go. And I'm just going to dab it under that corner so that I get the corner in there. Go down. And the next thing I'm going to do is take some more matte medium and I'm going to go all over the top. What this will do is create a barrier so that I can add things on top of this paper and it won't actually sink in to this paper. It'll keep whatever paint I want to put on the next layer, it will keep it uh, malleable. I'll still be able to manipulate it and it won't sink down and stain the paper. If you want to stain the paper, that's up to you. Um, you certainly can. I, I don't want to do that here, and there are times that I do. Um, though I don't generally prefer staining with ink unless it's super watered down. Um, I like to stain with glaze medium or ink. That's just a preference thing. Okay, I think I've got that about all colored. And I'm going to dry that up a little bit. I just use a regular heat tool and I'm going to dry this up a little. There we go. We're dry. And uh, Let's move on to some stencils. I love stencils, I have a million. Uh, the stencils that I wanna use today are this one, which is large numbers. I cut this myself um, with a template that I had found online. I love it. I don't sell anything with this on it because I don't wanna get in copyright trouble, but this is just my art journal, so I'm not really worried. So, we're gonna use these big, big numbers, and then I have an alphabet. I don't. I don't know who made this or where it came from. Um, is it gonna tell me? See-through stencils. Helvetica Bold, made in the USA, that's nice. SHB-25-CLN, I don't know. No clue. Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. I, I really don't know where these came from. Um, but, when I think about the West Wing, I think about speechwriters because one of my favorite characters was a speechwriter. 
uh, for the fake president on that program, which led me to typewriters. And it just so happened that the typewriters were the right color in the background. And so I wanted to go with that and then add some type. Um, and I think, I think I want the big numbers first. And what I do with these is I generally line them up on the sides or kind of where they're peeking in and out. And I'm gonna do these with the Payne's Gray from PBO. This is number 40 if you're looking for this. Squeeze them out here. It's probably too much. Story of my life. Oh look, I got a, got a paint booger. That's what I call them. Paint boogers. Anyway, uh, when I stencil, I use a makeup sponge. Makeup wedge. Um, get them at the drugstore, they're pretty cheap. I think you can even get them at the dollar store if that's your deal. And I don't want all of these numbers on here, but I don't think, I think I'm gonna leave them, get them as much on there as I can, and I think I'm gonna go through and do the odds. Just the odd numbers. When you're um, stenciling with the makeup sponge, you wanna pull some paint back and then kinda dab it off. Otherwise, it squishes underneath your stencil and you don't get a really clean stencil. It's not a big deal for me if I don't get a clean stencil in my art journal. If I was working on a piece for someone and didn't get a clean stencil, that would bug me. But in my art journal, I don't mind so much. Why is the phrase art journal so hard to say? I tripped over it all day yesterday. Um, I made one of these earlier in the week, process video, and then decided to update my phone and sync from a backup, because I got a new one, and lost my video. Yeah, that wasn't the brightest. Whatever. I only do, I should only do what I need to do, right? I should quit taking on things that are not my gift. I'm just tapping lightly. You can always add more with this stencil, but it's hard to remove. So just be, be mindful of that. I think that's good as far as background. I really like that. Next, I wanna put on the sentiment, and to do that, I'm gonna use some more matte medium. I don't know where that first part of the video cut off, but I'm gonna to have to edit cleverly together because my camera shut off. <laughs> that's because I'm prepared and I'm a professional. So, there's a phrase from the West Wing that I love. They use it on the West Wing Weekly Podcast, which if you're not listening to, you should be. The phrase is, what's next? I like this phrase for several reasons. President Bartlett uses it in the West Wing, which what's not to love about President Bartlett? There's that. And for the word what, I'm using some very, very old Tim Holtz sort of plasticky letter stickers, but they get this weird thing on here where they were attached. I'm just gonna cut those off. And I'm going to stick them right on. I don't care if they're straight. I want them somewhat straight. I have not had any trouble with these coming off of things, so I am not going to put matte medium under them. Please know that not all stickers will stay, okay? I heard somebody say recently, not all stickers are created equal. That's a true story. If you feel like a sticker is not going to stay, Use some matte medium underneath it and on top of it. I'm still just trimming those weird pieces off where they were attached. I don't even remember when Tim had these. I say Tim like we're close. We're not close, I've never met the man. I'm using part of a bracket for an apostrophe because there was no apostrophe. Let's cut that bracket in half. There, you may not be able to see it. It's on the blue, but it's there. So in lots of episodes, President Bartlett would say, Mrs. Landingham, what's next? Mrs. Landingham was his assistant. There's the what. Now I'm going to glue down the next. I'm not going to pull them up because I've got them in the place where I want them. So I'm going to just do kind of one at a time. Just gluing those down. You can lift it up and get back on there. And I'm gonna go back over the top just to make sure I've got a good seal, like you would with Mod Podge. See, I just said I wasn't gonna move it and I'm moving the X. Sorry. 
there's the E and I'm going to go back over the top. There's the X and the T. Did I have it underneath? I think I did. I think I did. It's okay. It's still a little moist. You have a few minutes of lag time with matte medium, not a ton though, because it's pretty quick drying. There we go. What's next? Um, again, if you're not listening to the West Wing podcast, if you've never watched the West Wing, I'm their new evangelist. It's just the best television I've ever seen. Probably the best I've seen since MASH. take my charcoal pencil one more time I'm gonna hit around the edges of next there you have it a quick and easy art journal page I followed my prompt for the day I used a mint color mint was the prompt once again, those prompts are from yellowdaisyart.com under the Muse 30 section. Uh, any questions you have, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, I'm going to do art journal pages for the rest of October using these prompts. I'll follow up and show you the ones that I've done in the in-between times and expect an art chew on Monday morning. Uh, and that's all I've got. As always, my friends, remember to get out, do something, make something, and give love.